What is up guys, this is Tito back with another video on the Redmi K20 Pro and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the latest Nusantara project version 4.7 the name is Celeron and of course you're getting the Android 12 L build over here with the build date of 14 July 2022. This is the latest update. If you don't know how to flash this Nusantara ROM on your Redmi K20 Pro, you will find the links for that in the description. Do not worry. Now, of course, I'm going to show you the home screen. This is how it looks like. And of course, you are getting launcher launcher present by default over here if you're noticing. And on this launcher launcher, everything is good, like double tap to sleep and stuff is there. You won't be disappointed with the customization of it. As you can see, plethora of customizations are there. But the only thing is I had a launcher backup. I could not simply restore the backup with the settings. I don't know why. But yes, this is the launcher 12.1 dev here it shows. I just enabled the always on display over here. So I'm going to show you the double tap to sleep right now and the fingerprint scanner speed and stuff. Let me show you that as you can see double tap to sleep is working perfectly fine. This is how the always on display looks like and the clock is actually pretty bold. Looks beautiful I would say and double tap to wake is also working fine. This is how the lock screen looks like and I'm using a wallpy wallpaper I guess. But yeah right now let me just show you with the fingerprint scanner by just tapping on it as you can see it unlocks. So yeah no problems with the fingerprint scanner it unlocks perfectly fine and the animations everywhere it looks beautiful I would say. And here from the always on display, I mean from the lock screen too, as you can see. And even with this left hand thumb, as you can see, the unlocking speed is great. No problems whatsoever that I have faced with the fingerprint scanner. And even the always on display is very stable. In terms of the Android version section, this is how it looks like right now. And the version shows as 4.7. If you tap on it, you will get the Nusantara project logo right here. And we have the Nusantara project version again. And we have the story right here. And the build date and the logo looks just beautiful i would say right now let me show you the maintainer is still wadi habib so huge thanks to the developer for this amazing rom and here if i tap on the android clock in the easter egg it still shows 12 for some reason i don't know why but it should show 12 l but here actually it shows 12 l and the security patch is of latest july 5th 2022 the stock kernel is the snap light kernel is next rate as shows as enforcing back to the home screen this is again how it looks like the widgets are working perfectly fine no issues whatsoever to the left of the home screen we get the google's discover page and they are pretty smoothly working swiping down gets you to the notification or the quick selling panel and here swiping up gets you to the app drawer no problems whatsoever with all those the ui definitely feels snappy but i can definitely say this is running at 60 hertz so you may be noticing some stutters or like it may be feeling a little bit slower if you have used the evolution x roms and stuff where you get the 72 hertz mod right out of the box but yes this is how it is it's a basically like normal experience i would say nothing very special about the refresh rate and stuff it's running basic 60 hertz so no problems whatsoever with that talking about this bluetooth battery icon if you're noticing looks beautiful and even the battery icons and stuff they look beautiful but here it's getting cut it out on the top because I have a black border tempered glass applied but with other ROMs I did not see this problem as you can see this is getting cut it out if I hold the device in this angle but if you hold it just like this you will like be able to see the icons properly but yeah I have a tempered glass applied that's why you may be feeling this is like looking weirdly and right now as these bluetooth headsets are connected you can see the battery icon over there even in the quick setting panel it shows the battery percentage right there so that's beautiful and here you will also get these kind of clock and stuff on the quick setting panel also the calculator and stuff looks beautiful over here it it is looking really really good i would say and even pressing on the buttons gives you really like amazing experience and over here all the animations looks beautiful of android 12. Talking about the quick setting panel again, this is how it looks like. We have the Wi-Fi mobile data toggle right there and the mobile data is right now disabled because I don't have a SIM card in the device. But if you have one, Volte calling and stuff should be working fine here. And we have the flashlight, dark theme, auto rotate, night light, hotspot, etc. The always on display toggle is there. The screen recorder is there and it does this kind of animation. This is Android 12 L animation. It looks beautiful, I would say. And of course, you can record the device audio and microphone audio at the same time with the screen recording. Then we have the heads up, the battery saver. Do not disturb data saver etc and if you go to the far most quick setting panel here you can see i have added the google home controls and the extra dim the fps info also shows up but i would say it's looking a little bit weird as you are noticing but yeah it's working fine and we have the dc dimming and we have the high brightness mode that will make the display really really bright in daylight and here we have the power menu this is how it looks like and advanced reboot options are there so you can directly reboot to the recovery or fast boot 
from right here. Now in the system settings, this is how it looks like. We do not get any system updated for some reason, I don't know why. In the gesture settings, we have the quickly open camera, the toggle flashlight, and we have the quick tap option. You can have these back tap kind of features. In the system navigation gestures in the settings, if you scroll down, we have the pill length and radius customization both. So you can actually customize the pill bar just how you like it. And we have the pill margin on bottom, full screen gestures, back gesture animation. Then we have the swipe to invoke assistant too. So that should be working fine again, as you can see. Two button and three button navigations are there as well. Then we also have the one handed mode that works fine. Then we have the press and hold power button to toggle flashlight option and the skip music track and up to playback, etc. options. Let me go back. We have the pop-up camera settings and we have the pop-up camera calibration option. That's the like motorized cameras calibration. If it's getting stuck or something, you can use this feature. Pop-up camera sound effects are there. Then we have the front camera raise dialog and the camera LED customization. Now that's about it about the system settings. But in the Nusantara Wings, you will find huge, huge amount of customizations. If you have time, you can watch this or just notice the seek bar. You can just like skip this part by looking at the timestamps. Right now, let me show you the customizations. Inside Nusantara Wings, this is how it looks like. In the game space, we have this disable heads up, then the in-game ringer mode and stuff. You can add any game that you would want to. Also the overlay and stuff you can do. Now here, I have noticed one thing that even if you are in any app, if you just go to the recent panel, as you can see how it gets blurred, just like this. But once you leave it, the blur goes away. So the animation, I'm not really fan of it, but yeah, this is how it looks even when if you're just holding on the app just by going into the recent panel animation, as you can see, it's getting blurred, but the other app stays really like transparent, I would say. As soon as I leave it, as you can see, this is how it looks like. I don't know if this is a bug or something, but yeah, this is what happens. So as soon as I went to the theme section, this went black because maybe I have this force black theme enabled. Let's just disable that. Right now, let me just disable the dark theme. So as you can see right now, if I go into the theme section, this is not getting into that black theme. We have the Nusantara clear theme option and we have the font style and stuff. And we have plethora of fonts, as you can see. Then the icon packs are there. We have the Akira's one. I'm using that one. And the icon shapes, you can choose from these. And we have the monitor theme engine customization. Use custom color options and stuff are there. And the dynamic system bars are there. I don't know how that works, but yeah. We have the Nusantara blur style. So let me just enable that. Okay, so this is the Nusantara blur style. All right. So this is just like keeping the wallpaper in the background with a little bit of blur. So it looks beautiful. I would say you can use it if you want to. Right now in the notification settings, we have the notification count, ambient edge lighting, and then we have all these customization for that and the annoying notifications. Heads up, you can disable from right here and customize it too. Reticker, the blink flashlight for incoming call, and the in-call vibration options are there and the artwork media background. You can actually customize that. In the MISC settings, we have the screenshot sound, then the unlimited Google photo storage, and the unlock hard FPS in games, and the swipe to take screenshot is also there. We get the share, edit, delete, and the capture mode features. Then we have the double tap to sleep for the lock screen and status bar, I guess. Right now, let me just move to the lock screen items. Here we have the four small clock, charging animation, lock screen charging info, and the temperature unit. In the fingerprint scanner, like preference, we have the FOD feedback and stuff, and we have plethora of icon pickers. But in this particular panel, as you are noticing, if I scroll just like this, just notice how much lag is there. I'm not really sure why this lag happens, but yeah, this is how it works. And we have the UDFS animation. You can enable it if you want to. Even when I would say I'm tapping on the fingerprint scanner animations. But yeah, this panel does not lack that much. Right now, let's move on to the battery options. And in here, we have plethora of battery icons. Just notice how many battery icons this is for the sweetest bar only. I'm using the style B landscape R. With that, this is how it looks like. But you can go with any battery icon over here. There are plethora of options, I would say. Then we have the battery percentage. You can have it inside or outside the icon. Then the battery estimate and stuff. And the do not disturb battery icon. That's like the light over here and we have the clock options. Also, we have the status bar clock and date customization if you want to do those. Tuner of status bar icons are there and we have the colored icons disabling option. Nusantara logo is there right now. I have it enabled. Vault icon, 4G icon, etc. options are there. Let me go back. We have the traffic indicators. You can, of course, customize that from here. Then inside buttons, we have the volume rocker wick and the volume panel on left and stuff. And by the way, this is how the volume panel looks like. You can actually like see this animation. Looks beautiful, I would say. This animation never just gets old. Yeah, this is just amazing that you can switch between your Bluetooth device or your phone speaker simultaneously, even when you are connected to a Bluetooth device. 
we have the haptic feedback excellent swipe action and stuff and you can customize that too from navigations over here that's all the customizations i would say right now let's just move on to the battery settings this is how it looks like we got the battery temperature right here then we have the battery percentage shows up over here but there is no charging cycle even though this is nusantara so you will get amazing amount of customizations but you will not be able to see the charging cycles so right now let me show you i have tested it with the aku battery app and with that i would say you can get about five to six hours of screen on time Yes, the battery life is decent, but definitely if you have not replaced your battery, you will not get that much of a good battery. And here in the health section, I have about 70% health left. This battery is about like 750 charging cycles. So you may guess that how much is left of this battery. The battery life for me is decent and even fast charging should be working fine here. That's not a problem. Obviously, if your battery's health is good. Right now, let's talk about the camera. And here, I would say I have installed a separate camera over here. And with that, the camera quality is great. This is a Gcam 8.5. I'll link it below in the description. Do not worry. And here with that, the front camera and stuff, everything is working fine if you're noticing. And you can customize it however you'd like to. And even in the videos and stuff, you can take it. And here, let me show you the shutter speed once you take a photo. Just notice how much time it takes. But yes, there is no stock camera up over here. As you can see, I can just simply uninstall this camera. So yeah, you don't get any kind of stock camera, but of course you can install this Gcams and stuff. You can get the links from the description. The picture quality is amazing. No problems whatsoever with that. If you want to install AMX camera, of course you will get the links in the description too. Right now, let's jump into the sound settings. This is how it looks like. I would say this looks beautiful. I don't see these kind of icons in the sound settings in most ROMs, but here it looks good. If I scroll down, we have the ringtone vibration pattern changing option. Then we have all these always show icon when vibrate mode and the touch vibration etc so right now let me actually enable this always show icon so this is how the icon looks like i guess and here we have the touch vibration per app volume control and we have the me sound enhancer and the sound quality via the headphone jack is great with the utilization and you can set a preset particularly and we have this hi-fi audio option too clear speaker option is also there if you want to use that also the screen locking sound, charging sound and vibration etc you can disable. In the display settings we have the brightness level, the adaptive brightness. Inside lock screen we have the custom options and here we have the always on, the music ticker etc. And we have all these raised to wake and stuff if you want to use those. And the allow window level blurs options are there. And we have the color set to saturated. Also, you can control the RGB over here. The double app to wake is there. And yes, the ambient display customizations are there. You can like enable this pickup option from here and let's just keep the device for right now here and if i pick it up as you can see the display actually wakes up so yeah this is good and right now in the custom display settings you do get the receiving and the high brightness or the outdoor brightness mode that's cool now in the security settings and face and fingerprint option we have added the face and in here you'll see we do not get any like customization for when swiping up on lock screen but yes it is on when swiping up on lock screen by default and we have the quick unlock right here and the app lock is there let me actually show you that if i go into this and if i go into the product apps and if i search for photos as you can see google photos and stuff is there i have locked some particular apps and let's go back we also have this auto reboot feature if you want your device to reboot automatically after 72 hours or something you can definitely do that from right here right now let me just show you the face unlock speed if i double tap over here the phone actually gets locked and here from the like lock screen as you can see it's not using the face unlock so for that i have to actually use the like swipe up gesture and if i swipe up on the lock screen then only it will unlock let me show you with the always on display and right now if i double tap as you can see this is how the always on display looks like if i double tap to wake and then swipe up as you can see it unlocks pretty fine with the face unlock feature right now if i show you the app lock this is how the app locking ui looks like and over here i just have to tap the fingerprint scanner and as soon as i do that it unlocks and goes into the app no problems whatsoever with that and even this animation if i have missed that looks beautiful the safety net passes right out of the box over here so you should not be having any issues while using banking apps on this rom and the drm info stays as l1 here so you can stream netflix or amazon prime videos in 1080p without any worries but if you're gonna look at the scrolling just notice this is how the scrolling is it is smooth i would say it could be a little more smoother with 72 hertz but here what i have noticed let me actually show you if you have a music playing in the background so yeah this is what i have noticed while playing music or something as you can see the scrolling just becomes a little like weirdly slow 
which is like not happening with any other rom i haven't seen this with any other rom i would say but here in nusantara it happens so sometimes as you can see right now it's fine i would say but sometimes i have seen it gets a little bit stuttery or jittery which should not be happening with like a device which has a snapdragon 855 i would say and talking about the overall performance yes the performance is good enough and here if you are noticing the split top and stuff are working fine and you can scale the particular apps just like this and yes the overall performance while daily driving was not that bad at all and the performance was good with all these customization and stuff so if you love all the customizations present over here you will definitely love this rom and here are the android and geekbench score with a cpu stress test on this particular build so let me know in the comments what you guys think about this rom and give this video a thumbs up if you liked it subscribe to the channel if you have not yet this is it from kd index signing off for today i'll be catching you guys in the next one bye now